We have achieved our goal, everyone. Herbert spotted the owl, and there it is. It's a giant eagle owl, a wonderful example of it. We are going to try and get a little bit closer, but I've got to tell you, although Sir Fergus has now, of course, zoomed all the way in, which makes it probably relatively easy to see, when Herbert spotted it, I mean, there's no ways I would have seen it like that. I guess it's not that surprising, but I don't know many people who would, been, who would have been able to see an owl sitting at that distance. It's probably 120 meters odd from us, sitting in a tree in the deep shade. There's just a little bit of sun shining off him. All righty, let's try and get a little bit closer. He's a beautiful owl, and he's just making his last calls before he settles for the day. Now, Herbert, you feel free to throw a stone at the back of my head if you feel like I'm moving too fast or in not the correct stealthily manner. Herbert is now behind us, which of course can be a good thing because it allows unfettered view of the front, but it can be a bad thing in that I may well not spot it again before he does. Let's go down through here, I think, and then maybe we'll head that way afterwards. This is an enormous owl, by the way. It's this big. And Lara, you were wondering how big it is. Well, that's roughly the size there. There it is. It is watching us. Can you see it there, Ferg? Has it flown? Oh no, there it is. There, two of them. Oh yeah, there, 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 there. It's landed. Enormous birds, and they take all sorts of things in the night. Scrub hares being a particular favourite of theirs. course we try and move silently and it makes you appreciate how brilliant the predators are able to place each foot where they know it won't make a noise but at the same time look where they're going and I don't think that that is any easy feat the only way we'll know if they disappear is if we see the fluttering of wings through the shadows Now, I have walked these birds a few times, and basically what happens is, eventually you, they kind of realize you're not after them and they will settle, but it can take hours. So I think this will be our last sort of attempt, just watch this tree, which is a knob thorn. And Yes, indeed. Consulting detective, you say, do small birds ever mob owls like they do eagles? That's how we found this thing. We heard him call, but then we saw the birds mobbing down on him, and that's how we knew which tree he was in the first time round. They're not doing it at the moment, although I did just see a drongo, and as we know, the drongos are very intolerant of birds of prey. So we've put Herbert in front now. Lovely bird calls all the way through the woodland here. You got him, Herb? Herbert's got him, obviously. <gasps> there they go. <laughs> Did you get them? Well done, Ferg. So those were... Those were the owls, and they were being mobbed, as consulting detective pred predicted by the fork-tailed drongo. That's fantastic. Ori, I'm afraid, I, oh, your question is, do they live in tree holes? No, no, they don't. They live on the branches, and then they build nests of sticks. It looks like an eagle nest, very uncomfortable for the poor chick to be raised in. And we used to have, when I used to work at Angala, there was a nest that... Um, they built in the fork of a Balanites tree or a torchwood tree, like that big one that we often try and climb. And 
yeah, we used to go past them and see them just about every day. And eventually they raised a little chick. But it took them, you know, I was there five years. I think it probably only raised one chick in five years. So you can imagine they're not enormous in numbers. And their population numbers probably, uh, were it not for protected areas, would be extremely low indeed. And I'd, I'm not sure they're, they're endangered, but they're certainly threatened.